In this chapter, we are going to see some of the coefficients of correlation. So this session is going to be interesting, trying to work on some practical problems, n into summation xy minus summation x into the value of r is nothing it doesn't have a unit like kgs meters take the values fit it into the formula you will be able to score good morning and welcome to the second session of the correlation chapter 7 in economics in this chapter, we are going to see some of the coefficients of correlation, how we are going to analyze it. So this session would be a little bit of practical importance because we are going to solve certain problems and we are also going to learn about the various factors known as the coefficient of correlation. So moving forward, these are the topics that we are going to cover today. We're going to start with the correlation coefficient. We're going to start with the properties of correlation coefficient, the Pearson, and then we're going to talk about the quartile deviation and the solution for that. So this session is going to be interesting, trying to work on some practical problems, which would be important for you from the exam standpoint. And also, this would also play a very, very important role in terms of understanding the concept of statistical analysis in economics so moving forward now we are going to learn about the coefficient of correlation or the correlation coefficient now this is the formula you don't have to worry about it we are going to look into this value called as r r is defined as the coefficient of correlation and this is the formula for which n into summation x y minus summation x into summation y divided by n into summation x squared minus summation x squared again whole squared into n into summation y squared minus summation y the whole squared the formula is very very simple you don't have to get confused itself it's only a repetitive method of squaring it and we shall see it how we take this formula ahead now, the properties of correlation coefficient, R has got no unit. So as we talk about here, the value of R is nothing. It doesn't have a unit like kgs, meters, seconds or anything. It's a pure number. So whatever you arrive at, it's just a pure number. It means units of measurement and not a part of R. So at any point of time, we are not measuring exactly r and trying to say r is like this or r is inclined like this it's just a measurement of coefficient of correlation now a negative value of r will indicate inverse relation as i was telling you if x moves in one direction and y moves in another direction then we are going to talk about a negative correlation which moves then inverse way of moving the numbers all together a change in one variable is associated with the change in another variable in opposite direction so at any point of time you need to understand the variation the movement of the variables if r is positive two variables will move in the same direction so if r is going to be a positive value both x and y will move in the same direction so if x moves up y will also move up so that is what we are going to understand and analyze in terms of the values of r now moving forward the properties of correlation coefficient now the moment when i use the word coefficient that means there is some factor there is some analysis that we need to go through that we need to understand deeply now what is that suppose the value of correlation coefficient rise between the minus one and the plus one that is from here till here minus one to plus one that's what we are trying to talk about that means automatically there is a range that is created so you can understand the correlation coefficient like this as an umbrella curve where this being the minus one part and this being the plus one part so automatically there is some range that gets created altogether if in any exercise the value of r is outside the range it indicates error in calculation so you need to understand this very very clearly when you are doing a problem you need to know that if you are getting a value 
which is outside minus 1 and plus 1. If you are getting a value outside minus 1 and outside plus 1, the range, that means there is some error in calculation. Now, let us understand in statistics, especially when you are doing a correlation or a coefficient of correlation, that means to say that you need to maintain a range, you need to understand are we doing the calculation step by step correctly so that we are able to present our answers in the correct manner as far as possible. As I have told you, problems are always there to help us to score better. So that is why when we are discussing about each and every concept, we need to keep all those points in the mind and we should not make any kind of mistakes. Now, the magnitude of R is unaffected by the change of origin and the scale. Now, R is an independent function, independent variable altogether. It's not going to get affected by the scale, by the magnitude, by the way it is going to be presented because R is only going to measure the correlation coefficient. It's going to tell what is the coefficiency. That's all. It's just a measurement tool, but it is not going to get into causation or it is not going to get into a deep root analysis of how, when and what. Similarly, if R is 0, two variables are uncorrelated. So what if I get on to the midpoint where R comes to 0? That means both the variables are not related at all. Now, for example, in India, if I'm going to give you an example from the economy altogether. So agriculture is not related to manufacturing. Now, if something happens in the manufacturing industry like automobile, or chemicals or any other core manufacturing factor that has not got a correlation with agriculture. Agriculture is a separate core economy sector altogether. So if there is a variability, if there is a movement that's happening in agriculture, doesn't mean that the same momentum will happen in manufacturing. So that's where I try to say, if the coefficient value, if you are getting it as zero, that means both the sectors or both the variables are not related at all. If R is equal to one or R is equal to minus one, then there is a perfect correlation and there is a inverse relationship also. So there's an exact linear. If R is equal to one, I would like to say that they are exactly linearly related. Now, for example, let us try to take the situation that's undergoing in India, undergoing in world everywhere. Due to the pandemic situation, due to the emergency situation or uh, a situation like the COVID which is happening all over the world, what is happening here is that all the manufacturing units across the globe have got affected because of this pandemic. So that means labor is a very important factor that has got a link to manufacturing. Labor is closely related to manufacturing. So now what is happening is that if the manufacturing factors are getting affected that is primarily because labor is not available here so that is a correlation both of them exactly move in the same direction more the labor more the production less of the labor less of the production now these are factors where you will see that both of them are moving in the same direction there are certain factors where you can see automation versus labor in that case now what is going to happen they are inversely related because higher the automation lesser the labor higher the labor lesser the automation so you can see both ways variables moving in the same direction variables trying to move in the opposite direction a high value of r will indicate stronger linear relationship so as i start moving myself towards this horizon now, when I see here, minus 1 to plus 1, when I keep moving, that means more I move myself towards plus 1, there is a stronger linear relationship that is getting created. So that's a very, very important factor or an important part that we need to learn here in the coefficient of correlation. Moving forward, now Pearson coefficient problem. We are going to look into a problem. We have the data here. Just you need to look into the data and we can fit it into the formula and we will be able to get the answer. N is being given here, that is 10. The summation xy is also given, 
that is 220 summation x squared is given as 200 summation y squared is given as 262 summation x is given as 40 and summation y is given as 50 so even in the examination you will be getting the values that are already been given printed on your question paper all you need to do is that take the values fit it into the formula you will be able to score full marks in your paper so moving forward let us try to understand how are we going to solve this problem now this is the solution so you have the formula here this is how we are going to find out the covariance of x comma y and then you also have the factors of x and x y so let's just have a quick look into solving the problem the covariance of x and y is given by this summation x y divided by n mean of x that is or into the mean of y so mean of x is nothing but summation x divided by n we know that the summation x value is 40 the n value that is given in the problem is 10 so 40 divided by 10 the answer is 4 similarly let's try to do the mean of y summation y the value is given as 50 now the n value is 10 so 50 divided by 10 the answer is 5 so that's how you get 4 and 5 here now covariance of x comma y you have the same thing 220 is the value given there n is the value there so 220 divided by 10 you will get the answer as 22 that is the most important factor minus 4 into 5 because you're going to subtract the value so 22 minus 20 the answer is 2 that's what you have seen here you've got the covariance of x comma y as 2 moving forward now you are going to find the d of x, the determination, the deviation factor here, the square root that is already given here by the formula, summation x squared by n minus of x squared, the square root that we are going to find out. So 200 divided by 10 minus 4 squared. Now this is where you need to understand to solve the problem both of these things are inside a bracket you need to solve each one of them individually before you come to the answer so let's do it step by step 200 divided by 10 minus 4 squared so 200 divided by 10 is 20 you got the first one 4 squared is 16 we are still inside the bracket now this value is 4 so the square root of 4 is what we need to find out the square root of 4 answer is 2 so that is how you are going to find out the answer for this problem it is very very simple and it is quite interesting to do it why because you just have to fit in the values and you will be able to get the answer there now the next one is the you're going to do for the y in the same manner so let's try solving here for y we have the value 262 divided by 10 same thing we are going to do here minus 5 squared so let's try to solve the problem here 262 divided by 10 that's going to be 26.2 minus 25 so we are still inside the bracket 26.2 minus 25 is equal to 1.2 that's what we see here but the 1.2 when you do the square root of 1.2 you get the answer as 1.0954 so this is where we are able to get the sd that's the standard deviation factor for the x factor altogether so with this we will try to come to understand the Pearson correlation coefficient how are we going to do it so this is the factor 2 divided by because that was the value we had got that 2 divided by 2 into 1.0954 so when you are doing this please try to understand that you first need to multiply this factor let's multiply this so 2 into 1.0954 that separate factor divided by 2 here so you will get the answer as 0.91 so our value is 0.91 this is very very important to check as i have told you in my previous slides itself our value should range between minus 1 to 
plus 1. So if you see here, R value is lying between minus 1 to plus 1. That means the problem which we have done is correct and the solution arrived is also correct. So that is why we need to check the answer twice before submitting it. So that is why it is very, very important to check the range here. It should lie between minus 1 to plus 1. This problem is very, very simple. You just have to fit in the values. You have to find out the square root, then apply the Pearson correlation coefficient and you will be able to get the answer. With this, we come to the conclusion for today's session. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful session. I hope and believe the session was interesting, informative and educative for you. In the coming session, we shall see about the different types of other problems in correlation. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again.